Welcome back to Palangi 21. Today I will show you a 2023 American romantic comedy film titled Red, White and Royal Blue. It is Prince Philip's wedding, and Alex and Henry do not get along well at all. The reason for this that Alex tells Nora is that he doesn't like the comparison between him and Henry that the media makes. Alex is often referred to as the American Henry, and that rubs him the wrong way because he is far nicer and more charming. At the reception, they get into a dispute that caused the wedding cake to fall on them. This causes an international media spectacle that spins the narrative that Alex and Henry hated each other. To set things right, Alex and Henry are forced to spend a weekend with each other, where they will be photographed while acting like friends. Having no choice, they pretend to be friends, until a few moments alone force the confrontation out of them. Alex has not liked Henry since the first time he saw him because he was a bit rude to him that day. It was Alex's first public appearance, and that is why he has been extra sensitive about it since. Henry apologizes to Alex and admits that he had been behaving like that with everyone for a few months at that time since it was around when his father had passed away. The two of them end up becoming friends. They start texting, sharing about their lives and get closer. These two meet again at the New Year's party where they dance and have fun. However, when Alex kisses and flirts with girls, Henry gets upset. Alex goes to see Henry, and Henry confesses his feelings for Alex, then kisses him. But then Henry feels guilty and leaves from there. After that, Henry doesn't reply to messages from Alex, because Henry doesn't know what the boy he kissed might be thinking about it, while Alex is still processing his feelings. He talks to Nora about Henry, and Nora helps Alex realize his feelings for Henry. They meet again at the next party. They both finally honest with their feelings and they kiss. Alex tells him about his key necklace, which is the key to his family's home in Texas. Henry then invites Alex to attend a charity polo match with him. They spend some time in Paris, and share their last names. Henry then opens up about his responsibilities as Prince of Britain. Henry asks Alex if he ever thinks he's not the president's son. Unlike Henry, Alex enjoys his life, and hopes to be of more help to others. Alex also shares about his childhood moving to US. Later, Alex helps his mother campaign in Texas. He meets Henry there, and they spend the night together. In the morning, Zara ends up discovering and is surprised by Alex and Henry's relationship. Alex says that people who know about them are the Secret Service, his own security, Nora, and Henry's sister Beatrice. Zara tells them that their relationship should not be known by the public. Alex and Henry are not just public figures, they are also political figures. They must be seen as an ideal public figure that can be accepted by many people. Alex eventually comes out to his mother, and his mother is very supportive of him. Alex invites Henry to hang out with his friends and his dad at his vacation house. Later Alex comes out to his dad, and his dad is extremely accepting and seems to like Henry as well. Encouraged by their acceptance, Alex decides to confess his love to Henry, but that only ends up driving him away as he is not sure if he can reciprocate that. Henry leaves Alex, and returns to London. Henry talks to Beatrice about Alex. He feels that he can't be with Alex because of his status as a prince. He also doesn't want to answer calls or reply to messages from Alex. Alex then follows Henry to London. Henry tells him the reason why he tried to push away the man he loved so much. Alex had the love and support of his parents, but Henry did not. His father had passed away long ago, his mother was too involved with her charity work, and his grandfather always governed his life with an iron fist. Henry had probably liked and been with boys before, but his grandfather had made sure that those relationships did not last. This meant that even though Henry agreed that the monarchy was an antiquated institution, he was still bound by its archaic ideas. Alex wants the two of them to create their own rules for their relationship, but he promises to leave if Henry doesn't want that. Henry is already too much in love, and he wants to fight for their relationship, albeit with some time and patience. Later, Henry takes Alex to the museum where his father used to take him there. This is his favorite place, and one day he hopes that he takes someone he loves and dances among the statues. Alex makes Henry's wish come true, and the two mend their relationship. The next day before returning to US, Alex confesses his love, and gives him his key necklace. 
He says that he will be patient and wait until whenever Henry is ready. Before that happens, the emails they have exchanged over the past couple of months, detailing their relationship, were leaked to the press. The person to leak the emails was Miguel, a reporter who had been previously involved with Alex and was either being ruthless with his job or was hurt by Alex's rejection of him. They are not allowed to contact each other and are individually dealing with the fallout of the situation. Alex publicly admits that he is in love with Henry and condemns the invasion of their privacy, while Henry has been close to being imprisoned in the palace. Luckily, Zara has been seeing Sean and is able to arrange a phone call between the lovers. Soon after, Alex flies down to London to be with his boyfriend, and the two of them are on the same page regarding how they are going to move forward. The king calls them for a meeting and they are able to hold each other's hand and declare their intention to stop hiding from the world for the sake of some fake prestige and privilege. It helps that the entire country has come together to support their relationship, meaning that they are not held back or have to fight shame and prejudice, at least to the extent they anticipated. After that, Alex and Henry are in the US, and are waiting for the re-election results of Alex's mother. The entire result hinges on Texas, where Alex had gone to campaign on her behalf, but that could prove to be a mistake due to Alex's new relationship and Texas conservative reputation. Luckily, the love story of these two seems to have heralded a better world, and Alex's mother wins the election. Later, Alex takes Henry to his family home in Texas, and shows him around. Adapted from Casey McQuiston's best-selling book, this film tells the story of a British prince and the son of the President of the United States. After an embarrassing incident at a wedding reception, enemies Alex and Henry are forced to spend time together to prove that they are good friends. The initial animosity begins to turn into respect, flirtatious moments, and then a growing admission that they are deeply in love. They are both public figures, in which they have to look perfect in front of everyone. They couldn't show their true self, especially Henry who was born in the royal family. The two wanted to keep their relationship a secret to protect their privacy, but protecting their family from controversy was even more important to them. What I like about this film is the performance of the two main leads. Their chemistry is so great. The build-up of the relationship between Alex and Henry, the sensitivity with which they spoke and understood each other, along with a generous amount of flirting, is what makes this an excellent film. Unfortunately, the film lacks the charm and book pacing. Everything felt rushed and they missed some details from the book. It's better to be a series than a film. Luckily, I was entertained by the charm of the actors and the humor of this film. On the other hand, the cinematography is beautiful, and is a huge part of what makes the film so romantic. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe, and turn on notification.